welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to my channel, welcome. I don't normally sound this nasally, but I have put off filming for too long due to being sick, so I have to film today. I also don't normally wear a dark lip when it's like 95 degrees outside, but we're feeling rebellious today. So on my channel, you can find anything from health, fitness, weight loss, um, anything lifestyle, family, minimalism you know, hair. So that is all here. I would love for you to click subscribe and to stay here and join us on this wonderful journey called life. But I'm going to jump right into today's video. Today's video is the minimalism tag. I get a lot of questions about my journey with minimalism, so I thought that I would just answer the basic questions through the form of a tag. So let's jump right into it. First question, what drew you to minimalism? I can't really say I was drawn to minimalism as much as it just is a lifestyle I was living. I was living a minimalism lifestyle, but I didn't know that it had a name. I didn't know there was a whole community of minimalists. So basically, I discovered in the past probably six-ish months um, that I was drawn to channels that were very minimalistic. I was drawn to neutrals. I was drawn to clutter-free homes, which that is the biggest thing that, that started me on the journey because I've always had this thing with clutter. I cannot stand clutter. I can deal with dirt on the floors, but I cannot deal with stuff everywhere. Um, so I just realized that having stuff made my life over complicated. It took me away from things that really mattered. The time that was spent cleaning and organizing and putting things away was taking away from my time with family, my time with growing my business, my time with YouTube, my time with my husband. Um, and I, I just, that's what drew me to the lifestyle was basically the fact that you are living a simple life with less that allows you to focus on the things that are important. So. That right there is what drew me in completely. That was it. Question number two, how did you start the decluttering process? Okay, so what really kicked off the decluttering process for me was reading the, um, the magic of the magical, what is it, magic art of, the art of tidying up, something like that, uh, by I think it's Marie Kondo. It's a very popular book. You can look it up and you'll find it. I'll link it below. Uh, but I read that book and it just made sense to me. It made sense the way that it worked. So I did exactly what she said. I didn't go room to room. I basically went um, genre to genre. So I started with my clothing and I did just like the book said. I took every single thing out of my closet, took off the hangers, threw it on my bed, created a pile of give away, keep, throw away. Um, and that was what I did. Then I went to, you know, kitchen supplies and I got rid of things that I had excess of. Like, why do I have 20 spatulas? So that is how I started. I read that book and it made the process really simple and I would recommend it to anyone. Question number three, which is a bit silly. Have you ever counted all of your things? If so, how many things do you own? No, I have not counted all my things. I would never count all of my things because minimalism isn't about how much you own. Every minimalist is going to have a different amount of items based on their lifestyle. So you might be a minimalist, but your hobby is hiking or camping. So you have a ton of stuff for camping, but then nothing in your living room. Um, you might have a family and have stuff all over your living room just for the visual homey appeal, but then you might have a really small wardrobe. So no, I've never counted my stuff. I think that would be really difficult having a family anyways. Um, no. Question number four. What are your tips for dealing with the desire for more? <sighs> this question is a little difficult for me to answer just because I don't have that desire. I've never had that desire. I'm not the person who thought, who thinks if I could just get to this position of power, I can have this many cars or this many houses or this many things in my closet. I don't want more. And I think the reason for that is, like I said, minimalism is not about stuff. Anybody can get rid of a ton of stuff, but then within a year have twice as much back. Um, so the desire for more, I think you have to sit down and really evaluate what you want in your life because it's definitely a mental 
discussion. It's a mental discussion you need to have with yourself. For me, like I said, there is no desire because my desire is to have more time freed up for my family, my loved ones, things that matter most to me. So you have to decide what would this lifestyle do for me? What would being a minimalist free up for me? What would I be able to do more of that I would enjoy, that I would love? And that's really all it comes down to. You have to, like I said, have that discussion with yourself, realize what is most important in your life, and then think about how minimalism supports and promotes that. Question number five. How do you deal with non-minimalists in your life? Simple answer, I don't deal with it. Um, but if I'm gonna give you kind of a long answer, <sighs> I don't know, I come with come from a family that likes to entertain large amounts of people. My husband's family likes to entertain large amounts of people. And that has been the biggest thing is people coming into my home, family coming to my home and being like, where are your cups? This is all you have? Like, where is your silverware? It's kind of hard because I, I understand where they're coming from. And the, the people pleaser in me wants to have all this stuff so that when they come, they are convenient and they have everything they need. But... It's not what is priority in my life. Um, me and my family of four, we don't need 20 forks. We don't need 20 cups per person. So I just kind of honestly ignore it. Um, in terms of gifts, I haven't gone as extreme as saying, hey, don't get us gifts. But that's just because with my family, we've always been very open about what somebody wants, what they could use, what they find value in. So, you know, for instance, for the kids, for their birthdays, when people ask me what they want, I tend to just say something that they can do outside, something that can entertain them outside. That way it's kind of promoting activity for my children and it's not promoting like sitting in front of a TV and playing video games or another big thing is books. We find a lot of value in books, both my husband and I. Um, so basically we just keep an open line of communication about what we could use or what we would really, really desire. Question number six and the final question, do you have any guilty pleasures where minimalism doesn't apply? Yes, I certainly do. Our desire is, one, movies. Um, we really enjoy watching movies. Recently, we have moved to more of a digital movie watching experience. We buy a lot on um, the Xbox. I don't know what, what like, system app that is, whatever, but um, we buy a lot of our videos through Xbox Live, but we do have a like, thing full of DVDs. And the reason for that is just we, that's something we enjoy. At the end of our busy day, we like to sit down with each other, watch a movie. We enjoy our kids sitting down watching animated films when they are a little older and have friends over. We like to have that option for them to have a lot to watch. Um, but that's just something kind of entertainment. But both my husband and I, something that, we de that definitely doesn't apply to minimalism is books. I am the person who believes you can never have too many books and part of me hates it and I want to get rid of them but I always keep books because I buy a lot of personal development and I want my kids to have access to those to the physical copy when they are a little bit older so they can kind of see it on the shelf and go oh how to be a badass like yes I want to read that so I just don't feel I guess to me it does kind of apply just because it is something I find so much value and joy in, so that's why I keep it. But, you know, like in a lot of the minimalistic blogs and books, they do tell you just like everything else to sort through your books. Get rid of things that you won't read again. Get rid of things that, books that you don't enjoy. And I just, in my mind, that's the one thing I leave for my children. And same goes for them. In their bedrooms, they have books. My daughter has a bookshelf full of books. That's just something that we hold dear to our heart. And that is it. That is the minimalism tag. If you have any questions about minimalism or you would just like to hear me speak on this topic more, maybe relating to a specific thing like relationships and children, um, leave it down below. Also be sure to follow my website which is terracreel.com because I do do blog posts on minimalism that I don't bring here to YouTube. So that is a resource for you. I thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy, if you enjoy these videos, please share it. 
get the word out. I have a lot of exciting things coming up. I am working with different film collaborators to bring you some fun, exciting new videos, new content that you've never seen on this channel. And I also have a giveaway coming up, a really fun giveaway with two other channels, so be sure to look out for that. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye!